Okay, so now we're into 5.1, Graphs of Reciprocal Functions. This is the first lesson of Chapter 5 on Rational Functions, Equations, and Inequalities of the Advanced Functions course. So, let's talk a bit about what is a reciprocal function. You know what a reciprocal number is. Remember if I said, um, if I gave you the number 7, what is a reciprocal of 7? And you'd say 1 over 7. And you probably did that when you were trying to find the reciprocal, the negative reciprocal to find the slope of a perpendicular line way back in grade 9 and 10. So if we have something like f of x and I say, what is the reciprocal of f of x? You'd say, well, it's 1 over f of x. So we're going to look at some basic lines first to figure out what the reciprocal functions would look like. And you already know this because you did it in grade 11. So it says if the original function is a line from q3 to q1, that's just talking about the quadrants, right? So this is q1, q2, q3. So q3 to q1 is a line with positive slope. Then the reciprocal function will be in these two quadrants. So your reciprocal is going to be in these two quadrants. And here's the negative x, and we're going to sketch the graph of both of them. So the important points when you're doing reciprocals are, first of all, the zeros of the original function, and that would be here. So the zero of this function is going to become an asymptote for the reciprocal, right? You have to have, if I said, what's 1 over 0? So we're looking at the y value. So 0, 0 becomes 0, and then 1 over 0, which is undefined. So where you have a 0, it becomes an asymptote on your reciprocal function. So for both of these, it would be the line right here. Okay, the other thing, so it says here the zeros of the original function become the asymptotes of the reciprocal function. So these are vertical asymptotes, right? Okay, so... Um, now, if we look at the reciprocals of these numbers, so let's say we had the point 1, 1. So here, let's call this 1, 1. And the point minus 1 and minus 1. So the reciprocal means what's 1 over the y value. So 1 over 1 is 1. So these points, the negative 1, when you have 1 and negative 1, so when 1 is the y-coordinate, then the reciprocal of 1 is still going to be the same number, right? Because 1 over 1 is 1, and 1 over negative 1 is still negative 1. So these are what we call invariant points. Invariant points. It means that they don't change when we do the reciprocal. Variant points. So those are invariant points, these ones here and these two here. So now we have to look at what happens as we, uh, let's go out first. So say this is 1, 1, and this would be 2 and 2, right? If f of x equals x. So the reciprocal of 2 is 1 over 2, which is a half. So that means my function's value here is going to be right there. Now as we go out, as you know, this is going to get closer and closer to zero. So one over four is a quarter. One over twenty is one over I'm sorry, one over twenty is point zero five. So as we go out, it's getting closer and closer, and that means we also have another asymptote here, and that's y equal zero. So if we look at points in between zero and one. Let's talk about a half. 1 over half is 2. So 1 over half is 2. And 1 over a quarter is 4. So the graph is going to look like this. Now you've drawn this. This is the graph of 1 over x. It's going to go like this. And likewise on this side we have the same reasoning to sketch this function like that. Now the same thing happens with the graph of negative x, so it's going to go up this way and it's going to approach the asymptote here as we go more and more negative. So this is again y equals 0 
This is x equals zero. We should have labeled that over here as our vertical asymptote. And this side is going to go like this. So these functions are familiar to you. You've done one over x before. So what are the key things that are happening with our reciprocal functions here? So we have the zeros become asymptotes. If the function is increasing, the reciprocal will be decreasing in those intervals. And if the function is decreasing, it will be increasing in those intervals. So let's look at that again here. So first of all, this is all greater than zero, right? We're all above zero for this part of the graph of y equals x, or f of x equals x. So it's still going to be positive. If I do one over a positive number, I still have a positive number. So that's going to keep me in this quadrant. So as this function was increasing, and remember you read from left to right, so this is increasing, but the reciprocal is decreasing. On this side, the function was increasing, the reciprocal is decreasing. And those invariant points where we have the y coordinates being one, because one over one is still one, and one over negative one is still negative one. So those are key points to help you sketch the function. Now, again, the other point here about the horizontal asymptotes, as x approaches infinity, what happens to the function? So as one over x gets really large, one over x gets really, really small and approaches zero, hence the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so let's move on to something a little more difficult. And I want to remind you or tell you right now that the next three lessons <clears throat> are going to be based on some handouts that I have on my website. And we're going to go over each of these handouts very slowly and carefully, because if you can graph rational functions properly, you'll find the rest of chapter five easy. So I just find that the textbook doesn't cover it in enough detail. And I will make you an excellent grapher of rational functions if you follow along with me. So do go to the PB Wiki site and find um, the handout, the PDF files for reciprocal functions one, 